In the last video, we developed the general solution to Laplace's equation in cylindrical coordinates, where we found infinitely many solutions that depend on two numbers, n and m, which has the following form. The radial component is described by uh, spherical Bessel functions. The angular component is described by trigonometric functions to be able to satisfy periodicity. And the axial component or the z component is described by exponential functions. And as we usually do in separation of variables, we built our general solution by superimposing all of our solutions that we found from our ordinary differential equations. And that's where we get the expression for the general solution of Laplace's equation as a double sum over m and n, n starting at one and m starting at zero. And this is being multiplied by the angular component. And this is being multiplied by the axial component. Notice then the last video we had a constant C naught over here but we don't need to add that because our sum already starts at m is equal to zero. So that constant is already included in the angular term. Okay, and then we said that to be able to use this, we need to know some properties of the Bessel functions of first and second kind. And in this video, we'll present uh, the properties that will be most useful to us. Okay, so this is what the Bessel functions of first and second kind look like. So Jm of z, where z is the general argument. Uh, you can see it has this oscillatory nature for each order. So the blue curve here corresponds to uh, the Bessel function of the first kind of zeroth order when m is equal to zero. And it kind of looks like a decaying oscillation, even though it doesn't decay all the way. Uh, notably, at z is equal to zero, it starts at one, whereas uh, the Bessel functions of the first kind of higher order start at zero when its argument is equal to zero. But they all have this natural oscillatory pattern. In contrast, the Bessel function of the second kind uh, diverges as z goes to zero and goes to negative infinity. And this will be important when we consider the physical constraints of certain problems. So for example, if the origin is included in our physical problem, then this factor uh, can't survive. Otherwise they will make the solution blow up. And then eventually uh, they start oscillating at about the uh, z is equal to zero line. Okay, so the most important aspect of the Bessel functions of the second kind to remember is that they diverge as z tends to zero. And then they keep oscillating. So from here, we can list some of the properties of these functions. One of the properties that may be of utility is the Bessel function of the first kind of order minus m is equal to the Bessel function of the first kind of order m times this extra factor minus one over m. 
So you may pick up a negative sign uh, if you if you change the order to its negative uh, counterpart. The Bessel function of the second kind can be expressed in terms of of order m can be expressed in terms of the Bessel function of the first kind by the following equation. Okay, so these two are uh, equivalent. The derivative of R to the M J of order M R just results in a reduction of order of the Bessel function. So the R to the M factor remains uh, there. And the only thing that changes is you go from order M to order M minus one. The converse of this by applying the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus is a m j m a is equal to the integral from zero to a of the Bessel function of order m minus one r dr. And here we've substituted r by a because that's our upper limit of integration. Okay, so this is an important uh, identity or result uh, for Bessel functions. Another important property is for the case where r is raised to the minus m with a Bessel function of order m, you pick up a negative sign, the minus m remains there, and you move up an order in the Bessel function. Okay, so a contrast between these two is you have a negative exponent over here. You pick up a minus sign and your order moves up by one in contrast to here where the order was reduced by one. The converse of this is analogous to what we had above. where the integral of the right-hand side over here gives us uh, the left-hand side over here evaluated at r is equal to a. And by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the derivative uh, is simplified. Finally, the uh, most important property for us is going to be the orthogonality of Bessel functions. Just like we had orthogonality for trigonometric functions, there's also a uh, trigonometric uh, or orthogonality characteristic to Bessel functions. And this says if you integrate from zero to A, the following quantity over dr. And this is equal to a squared over two. You move up 
an order in the Bessel function. And you have a chronicle delta factor. So this kills any terms where alpha is not equal to beta. And here I've used alpha and beta to denote the zeros of the Bessel function of, of order M. Okay, and this property is going to be crucial to us as we've done with the uh, previous examples where to satisfy a boundary condition, we uh, will have to find the coefficients of our sum over here. And we will need to reduce, we kill every term in the sum except for one by using the orthogonality of Bessel functions. And in the, in the next video, we'll go through an example of how to do that.